What's up guys, welcome to another episode of our speed flying spot series. This time we'll talk about some other short flights that you can do in Jura Mountain in France. We'll start off with a beginner flight, move on to more advanced flights and finish off with some proximity flying. If you haven't seen the previous episode, I highly recommend you to watch it since there I explain how we can get to these planes, what are some options for beginner flights and what are some other things you should keep in mind as well. Wait, 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 wait. I have an idea. Hmm. Okay, this could be more fun. So let's start with the very short beginner flight which I did on the north side of the mountain. You go there using the same path like the very first flight from the previous episode, but you need to go a bit further and once you see your house, you need to climb the small hill on your right side. You will be taking off from there and landing on the path. When standing on the top and looking down the hill, notice that you need to take off a bit more from the right side of the hill. Because if you try to fly straight, you will most probably experience something like this. Of course, all this depends on the wind, size of your wing and your weight. For your reference, the size of my wing is 12.5 square meters, my weight is around 60 kilos and there was very weak or almost no wind at this day. Guys, take a moment to notice my especially bad takeoff position during this takeoff. Arms are up, I'm not leaning forward at all. Guys, this is exactly how not to take off. I'm doing this in a bad way so you don't have to. You're welcome. Let's move on to the next line. If you remember the landing of the Leon line from the previous episode, we'll be using the same landing area for this line which I named the Sunset. This line is interesting because you take off from one hill, get close to another one and then you do a 180 turn and land right away. What makes this bit more advanced is that you're flying close to the ground and then you have to figure out when is the right time to do the turn in order to land exactly where you need to. Notice that during this flight my takeoff direction is almost the opposite of the landing direction. This could cause problems if the wind is too strong. Therefore make sure you only fly this line when the wind is weak, a bit from the side or just figure out another landing. So this next line I'm going to show you, I named it a slippery slope since the takeoff was rather a, uh, well, slippery slope. There was some snow so it made the grass really slippery. There was not too much space, you didn't have too much time to gain speed. On top of it all, there was right after the takeoff there is a steep slope with some rocks and it's a place where you really don't want to fall. You really want to make sure that you don't do any mistakes in this case and you take off just right. The landing is just under, it's a super short flight, but what made this flight important, at least in my case, was that it tested the landing area, which I later used for another really cool flight, which became my absolute favorite on the Jura Mountain. I'll show this line to you a bit later, but now let's watch the slippery slope.
star, guys, I missed you so much. Why did you run away? Is it because of the young lady down there? I know you too well, George, I know you too well. This should never happen again, okay? You understand? Now come back home. Guys, so tell me, would you ever want to try speed flying? Ah, uh, I'm sure you would like it. I'll show you some videos and I'm sure you'll change your mind. So this next flight I'm going to show you is my absolute favorite on the Jura mountain. And that's for several reasons. First of all, during the takeoff and almost during the entire flight, you're looking directly straight onto Mont Blanc and all the Alps. It's a beautiful view and makes this flight really special. Second thing is, the takeoff is quite easy, but at the end there's a huge cliff and it gives you a huge adrenaline kick once you go beyond that edge. As if, if there wasn't enough adrenaline already, here's some extra for you. And the last, but the coolest and the most important thing about this flight is, on your right side there's a cliff and a hill and you can go really close to these things doing some really nice proximity flying almost the entire way until the landing. The flight itself takes less than one minute, but you can get back up in like 15 or 20 minutes and if the conditions are great, you can be doing this the entire day. And that's exactly what I did. Okay, enough of talking for now, I'll let you watch it yourself. Guys, now we'll ask George and Bob, how do they like my speed flying videos? What about you, George? <laughs> thank you, thank you. What about you, Bob? How do you, what do you say? <laughs> uh, guys, don't listen to these horses. They don't know what they're talking about. I think we'll stop this interview right here. So that's it for this episode about short flights on Jura mountain. If you haven't seen the previous one about Jura, go do that right away. This place is really cool, you can get really creative on this one, come up with your own flights that no one has flew before and that's why I like it so much. If you're interested in more tips on other speed flying spots, go check out my channel, you'll find some other speed flying videos as well. Anyways, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing the next one. Take care. <laughs>